welcome to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. Oh, I'm so happy to have you on this show today. I am calling this show, What Does Real Science Know About the Virus? Because we keep hearing this thing and that thing, and, and there's so much misinformation out there, and there's so much confusion. And I thought it was time that we just sit down with a real scientist and find out what is really the science behind what we know about this virus. So my guest today will be Bob Hertz, who is the director of SciTech Laboratories here in Encinitas, and they are a research facility. And Bob is definitely in the know about what we need to know. So before we get to all of that, I just wanna welcome you to Change It Up Radio. Those of you who follow us know that we are a show about change. We like to spotlight change makers who are making the world a better place. And we also wanna bring you information to help you deal with change in a smoother, more productive way. And I think our show today really encompasses both of those goals because Bob is in the know. He's got a lot of great information for us. And he is also the head of a lab that is writing point on some very, very interesting technology to help our health and wellness be evaluated and, and be maintained in the state-of-the-art ways that are available to us now. I am very excited in this segment to introduce you to scientist Bob Hertz, who is going to be able to answer our questions about what's real, what's not, what's misinformation, and how should we really be feeling about living in the midst of this pandemic. So let me tell you just a little bit about Bob Hertz, who is the managing director of SciTech. He has over 50 years of entrepreneurial experience specializing in technology with expertise in software development, communications, pediatric cardiology, robotics, AI, and man machine interfaces. He has 25 years in complementary energy-based medicine, subtle energy research, and those sorts of, um, shall we say, alternative approaches or state-of-the-art approaches to medicine and well-being. SciTech Labs, which he co-founded with his life partner, Mary Clark, is a research laboratory and testing center that features pioneer devices that measure the biofield, the subtle energies that access various states of wellness and health. These devices include brain mapping, heart rate variability, interstitial fluid analysis, and medical thermal imaging, which, by the way, I had at SciTech myself just last month. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to Bob Hertz. Hello, Bob. Hello there, Paula. Good to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here because as I was just saying to our listeners, there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. There's a lot of confusion and, and there's a lot of hearsay about what's happening and what we should do. So Bob, let's begin with, let's talk some specifics about the virus. All right, we all know it's a novel virus. We've never seen anything quite like it before. We know that it began in China, in uh, Wuhan. But tell us what is the latest that we know about how it's transmitted? Well, uh, we've learned a lot, uh, but we go back to the original um, uh, statement, which is that it is airborne. It's not just airborne in particles when you sneeze or breathe or speak, but it produces an aerosol 
An aerosol stays suspended in the air for hours. You can make, take a sneeze, walk away. Somebody can walk through it four hours later and pick up some of the material and wow. become infected. So wow. masks are important. They protect others when you don't necessarily know that you are infected. 45% is said to be caused by asymptomatic people who have no symptoms, are not aware that they're carrying the virus, and uh, inadvertently are affecting people. Um, and that is a large piece of the puzzle that we're facing now. 45%. That's huge. So like the regular flu, which some people have compared this to the flu, but the regular flu, you know you have it because you have symptoms. You feel awful, right? You're telling me that you can be asymptomatic. And when you're asymptomatic, do you feel at least kind of tired or kind of punk or not yourself? Or can you really feel great? Uh, you not necessarily feel anything other than your normal uh, feelings for the day. Wow. It's um, asymptomatic means you have no symptoms. And some people have mild symptoms and they don't think they have anything either. Uh, but that's just the problem. And in order for us to really control what's going on and put in, uh, a slowdown end to it, we need to get everyone tested because everyone is a potential unknowing carrier. It's mm. just a fact. And it's so a big fact. What is the average? I know this, one of the things about this virus, just yesterday, I heard a doctor at my rotary meeting saying that so many people are being affected in different ways because the virus seems to pick and choose which organs it's going to attack depending on who you are. So people are presenting with different symptoms, some with intestinal symptoms, some with the lung thing, the throat thing. But what kind of an incubation period are we talking about on the average? From the time, let's say I'm exposed, walking through a sneeze that happened four hours ago, what, what incubation, what am I looking at? How many days till I know something's wrong if I'm not asymptomatic? Uh, a typical um, first exposure incubation is between two and seven days. That's typical. It can be longer, it can be quicker, but between two and seven days. That's about where it is. Okay. So if you take a test, you've been exposed, um, and you wait a couple of days and get an antibody test, you could tell whether or not you had a IgM antibody, which indicates the uh, initial phases. But without a um, nasal swab or the other type of test to find antigen tests, you don't know if you're infected or not. So both of those are pretty important. Boy, I'll say. So, I mean, in a way, to be totally safe, you almost have to be tested every day, right? Or at least a couple of times a week. It really depends on your exposure to the population. A first responder, some of the research people I work with in Phoenix and New York, uh, they take first responders daily. And they test them for the active infection and for the antibodies. But the uh, active infection is going to tell you whether you have it absolutely or not. And the antibody tells you how your body has responded to exposure. So, uh, and I know we're going to talk in a little bit more depth <clears throat> a little bit later in the show about the testing, because I would really like you then to explain exactly the difference between the two tests. Most of the daily testing that's being done on people like you just described is either, either the throat or the nasal swab, correct? Correct. And that tells correct. you very quickly now, fortunately we get the results quickly, but that tells you if you've been exposed or are you carrying the virus? What does it tell you? It tells you whether or not you are infected. Ah. You can carry the virus and not be infected. As a matter of fact, people who are actually go through the virus and have you know, gone through all of the stages and their bodies are showing that they have the acquired immunity and the nasal swab shows they have no active infection the virus itself is capable of living in the back of your throat or your nose 45 days, approximately. And you can 
you can shed live virus even after you're over the disease yourself. So there, it's, um, it's not like the typical flu. Uh, it's very different, uh, although some of the symptoms are very similar. Uh, and the biggest problem is that we haven't been around it long enough to see what the long-term effects or even the mid midterm effects uh, of what happens a year from now, what happens five years from now, how does it affect children and how does it affect uh, other age groups. But we do know that it has this um, remarkable ability to uh, affect many different organs and create many different I'll call them red herrings. They, um, mm -hmm. COVID toes, COVID nose, COVID, um, there's a COVID name for almost every symptom that appears that isn't tracked back to a normal uh, pathology. Wow. So in a way, Bob, you're saying we're at the very beginning of this thing. We're just beginning to really get a sense of the scope of how big it is and, and how much it can affect our lives and our bodies, correct? Well, yes, we're at the beginning of understanding what it does in the long term and even in the midterm. Uh, we're not in the beginning of it happening. It's been happening since uh, right. fall last year in this particular strain. So mm -hmm. um, we've had enough exposure to know how to cope with it, how to um, restrict its spread as you see for most of the countries that have taken it seriously and made the type of demands of the public that are necessary to put your arms around it. And you see what exactly what happens, regardless of the rhetoric. It's just a one, two, three, do this, do that. And you will start to curb the spread and get your arms around it. And then when it outbreaks again, a another quick uh, retreat back to the masks and whatever else you need to sequester people who are infected, uh, it becomes a much easier task, as you can see from most of the major countries in Europe. So what is that one, two, three? <laughs> uh, one, two, three is to number one, um, stay at home, stay out of the public space if you can. Uh, number two, if you're in the public space, you don't know if you're infected even if you had it and you were cured because the antibodies are now, we're finding that they don't last like we expected. If you have the virus and you are quote unquote cured from it and your antibodies wear off in a typical 90 to 120 days, not like the polio vaccines or whatever exposure that gives you acquired immunity for years or a lifetime, um, even when a, vir a vaccine is developed, at this point, we know that we'll need a booster. We could need a booster every quarter. Wow. One company is working on a single shot, and I wish them well, because that would be a wonderful thing to happen.